Hi everybody, welcome to Gumba TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Howling Japan. And uh, we got some stuff to talk about. Yes, we do. Some interesting stuff, but I'm gonna save that for a little later. Because yep. I want to start off with the, uh, the new gun that just came in. So, getting right into it, Ryan. Here's the uh, the latest uh, Hobby Japan magazine, October issue. Yes. And like last month's Dengeki Hobby, it comes with some bonus parts. And you get to make uh, the Age 1 Razor. Here's. But basically, it's just uh, two runners. It's bonus stuff, so you're not going to get a lot, but you do get two runners. Which is exactly what I need. I really wish military magazines would do what these guys do. Uh, you know. This is kind of a one-time thing. They're not going to reproduce the razor parts. No. So if you want it, all you do need to have the uh, age one normal HD kit, but then you can... Uh, Make yourself the razor. We still have a lot of the magazines in stock. Uh, we got a second batch, so there's a pile okay. in the warehouse, but I don't know exact numbers. But uh, next thing I want to talk about, also Gundam Age, mm -hmm. this is the uh, Age FX. And I think, Ryan, that this is the age, one, age suit that I like the most. Really? Yes, I mean, just check it out. So why do I like the uh, Age FX so much? Well, actually, I wasn't quite sure. So I tend to dismiss most Age kits. But I think uh, what they when they included this, uh, if you can see it, not really. There's a clear metal ring here. Let me see. Oh, show the box. Here's the yeah. best shot. Here yeah. it is. This, this, this plastic, sorry, plastic ring here that attaches to the stand. And uh, you can have these little effect parts, which are right here, by the way. So is that a special ability or something? Uh, probably. You know. You know. <laughs> is age still There's going? There's a stand too. HFX. Is the age still on TV? Uh, good question. I don't watch television, so I can't tell you. Oh yeah. If anyone out there knows and still follows age, let us know. Yeah. And there's the stickers right there. Of course. This is probably the best age kit I I uh, have seen. And on top of that, not age related, of course. Is the uh, it's the gun related? It's the Hambrabi. I mean, how do you pronounce that? Hambrabi. Ham 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 this is one whacked out looking suit. I mean, check that out. Transforms. Oh, it transforms. Yeah, look at that. Kind of some weird manta ray type looking thing. But uh, when you look, when you open this up, you see these kind of things first, right? Very different mm. from what you usually see when you open up a, a model kit. And the blue is very blue, almost like the goof. Very cool. And uh, you get these these green parts for uh, the lines and stuff, and a couple small runners in the end here, as well as its beam savers and the wire that you're gonna need for the projecting weapon. So more Zeta Gundam. So if you want something a little different, yeah, then uh, this might be uh, up your alley. It's definitely <laughs> upside down. It's definitely upside down. <laughs> there you go. All right, now uh, on the last episode. I brought out a can of uh, Gunpla related yes, cola you did. and uh, we had lots of uh, comments. Lots of people were like, wow, where did you get that kind of yeah. stuff? Well, I've got something even crazier today. You're going to show us or off to the tank or before I'm going to show tank? it right now, Ryan. Okay. You know what's in this bag? Gundam. Gundam tell me, sir. Gundam related. Axe body spray. <laughs> yes, see. <laughs> uh, apparently in September, they're going to release axe related body sprays that come with tiny little guns. So you're gonna, you're gonna put this on this episode like you were drinking Pepsi last episode? Yeah, we're gonna see your hairy chest. I'm gonna open this up. Now, uh, you're not gonna be able to, this, you can't buy in the stores yet. This is like a preview. Okay. I actually got this at the uh, Karahabi event that just happened yes. in uh, Makuhari there. So, uh, oh, I smell it already. Does it smell you know, like kinda, Gundam? It's a grip. <laughs> Does it smell like Gundam? <laughs> Although, see, this is this is the conundrum. Like when you spray this axe stuff on you, women flock to you from miles around. Right, it's right? body soap. But okay, but when will they flock to you? What happens when they get there and see this? I don't know. They're just gonna turn around and walk away. Like they come all this way, but I mean, this is what they get. Well, look, we're still there. married and we both Gundam kids. So, yeah. but uh, we started after we were married. Have you That's asked true. your wife how how she? Uh, <laughs> What sex appeal do you have now, Ryan, now that you're doing like the model kids? You know, have you asked your wife that? I put on a few kgs. <laughs> anyway, I was at the Kara Hobby Show. 
And uh, I went there to take a bunch of pictures. It smells like body soap. Because they had <laughs> the, um, they had a lot of the uh, Future Gundam releases. Yeah. They had the MG Buster, which looks good. The MG Aegis, which looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. The RG Zeta, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be great. It's slightly more expensive than the normal RG, so okay. I think that you might see extra parts in there when it comes to part swapping. I couldn't get a look at the kit, okay. so I can't couldn't determine that. And I also saw the promotions for the MG New Gundam version comics coming out okay. now. Yeah. But of course, uh, when you go to these kind of events, there's, there's a specific reason that people like me go to these events. Why is that? Why is that? Oh, okay. Gente. <laughs> Sweet. You can only get this at the again, at the uh, Karahavi event wow. on Sunday and or Saturday and Sunday. Okay. The last weekend of August, and I got it. You're gonna show us inside? Of course. So Ryan, it's basically the same as the uh, MG Blitz, except Whoa. that. Whoa. Here. It's entirely clear. The entire can't even model. see it on camera. It's just white. It's, yeah, it's like, can, can you get that? Can you focus on these? Is there any way? Yeah, it's just this clear white stuff. <laughs> so uh, normally uh, you'll see like um, clear kits. They'll build the, just the armor, clear armor. Yeah. But then you get the frame as normal. That happens occasionally. But this one is everything. Everything is totally molded and clear. It's like looking at clouds. It's, it's like heaven. It's like looking a mirror into your soul. Yes. Look, and the only color on this is the, the beam sabers. It was really stand out, by the way. Like, wow. It's crazy. It is. When, when the thing I think that makes these clear kits so popular is one is because they don't do it very often. But when you think about it, you get a clear kit like this, and it's basically a, a canvas. You can paint any color you want. Is it hard to assemble? I'd imagine like all these clear parts, it's really uh, hard to you figure gotta out. Be paying careful attention when it comes to lining things up because yeah. you know it's it's just a big clear jungle in here. But uh, yeah, it's, that's the big the big seller from the, the yeah, our hobby event. Is sweet, this baby. Actually, uh, I almost uh, didn't didn't get this when I got in line. Yeah. I had to get in line. And I waited for uh, like an hour and a half, and when I got to the table to say I want to buy this uh, blitz, yeah. they said we're sorry, we're sold out. And I was like, it's not. But uh, what I, yeah, what I ended up doing was uh, somebody else I knew was there yeah. and I got there before me and yeah. I actually had it and I said, hey, can you hook me up? And he hooked me up, so uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to get one of these. So The queues yeah. are crazy for that Gente stuff. And what happens is uh, you get people going there and they say, I need 20 of this, 20 of this, and 20 of this. Yeah. And uh, I guess they plan on selling it on the auction sites here in Japan. So they take these 20 tickets and uh, they go to the counter to pay, but then they only pay for like 10 of each. Yeah. And they keep those 10 tickets so no 10 more people cannot buy them. Oh. It's kind of shady. It's, it's kind of shady. It's and dodgy. I think Bandai needs to do something about that. Yeah, Bandai. But people are, they can go in there and get as many tickets as they want and prevent the people from behind them from getting them. And basically oh, corner the market. So they corner the market. Yeah, they corner the but market. But doesn't Bandai have a whole bunch of kits lying around there? Well, no, this is a one, one time event only thing. Oh, okay. They only made a certain amount. Oh, a certain amount of sold on Saturday, a certain yeah. amount of sold on Sunday, and when they're out, they're out. Okay. And they open the doors at 10. And when I got to that table at 11 something, they had already sold out of this one. Was this the only Gente kit they had? Uh, they had two HGs as well. They had the uh, Delta Plus in uh, uh, titanium finish, and yeah. they had the H2 Normal in uh, Mechie. Mm -hmm. I can, all I've got some pictures of those we can mm -hmm. throw up on the, on the blog there. And they had a H3 Orbital HG. Uh, clear version, Sweet. which was the first to sell it actually because it's only 800 yen. But yeah, there's lots of cool stuff, but Gente is Gente, it's, it's limited, so uh, I'm gonna hold on to this one. Yeah, I <laughs> know. And uh, I don't know if people out there who are not in Japan, I mean, good luck to you if you really want these things. Yeah, you, you have probably, to really come to Japan. You can probably find them somewhere, but you probably, you probably pay, pay a lot of money. Pay a premium, I'm eBay sure. eBay or something. Yeah, so. All right, Ron, what do you got for us? Um, I want to talk a little bit more about my tank. Oh, sweet. Coming along. All right, it's looking very tanky. So yeah, let me get set up and... <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, you go ahead. So, Serge, you can see I have uh, both tracks now on. Yeah. So pretty straightforward uh, thing to put on. And someone did tell me what this was called, but I totally forgot what it was. Oh, see. How can you learn anything when you ask for it's an the answer internet. and they give it to you? I don't know. It's all on the internet. Okay. It's just wiki it. <laughs> That's right. Okay. I need school. <laughs> I got Google. Yeah, I've externalized my memory, people. All right. Okay. But anyway, getting back to this this tank. Mm -hmm. um, so what I worked a bit on was the, uh, what's the technical word? Top of the tank? That's the technical word. The top. Okay. The top. 
I did a few little things and I want to point them out to you, but some of them are in Japanese. Mm -hmm. But I'll just show underneath here before everything falls out. There are some clear parts that you put in here. Hold on, let me get in there. You're gonna get in there? Oh, okay. Yeah. So it does come with a few clear parts. All right. Okay, but the things I'll mention is there's this little guy over here. Now, he fits over here. Mm -hmm. But please keep in mind, and it says so on the manual here, that if you do decide to put the figure in, yeah. you need to make sure that you... Well, just o basically... Open the hatch, basically. Oh, keep the hatch open. Yeah. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Another thing that fits on here are these two guys over here. Yeah. So I'd probably leave closed because there's no detail underneath. Yeah. Uh, another thing to keep in mind that the manual does mention that is in Japanese, which is over here, is please make sure that when you do uh, put in the clear part lights that they are the right way around. Yeah. And I'd also highly recommend that you glue them in because they will fall out and get lost almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, there's also two modes to the lights. Um, you can either have them open like this. Yeah. Or you can close them like that. Ah, uh, I see. But you need to um, glue that in. So yeah, there's a bit of gluing at the top. You, you have to decide how you want them and then yes. set them. Well, I think up like the up like this. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just ignore that for now. Look, let's look at this one. This is pretty stable, well, except for those things. But like the lights, you don't need to glue these in. Yeah. But if you want it like this. That's my question. Is the hatch supposed to be glued as well, or do you can you change it? Whenever you want to. No. Well, you just saw what happened there. Yeah. If you don't glue it down it's when you fall. when you play with your tank, it's kind of. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, if right. you do play with your tank, good for you. Just make sure it's glued down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and these guys will need to be glued down as well. Yeah. Because uh, if you don't glue them down, they will just fall off. Okay. As I just demonstrated. So I will take keep these guys off. Yeah. Don't lose so, those yeah. parts. Yeah. Don't want to do that again. And so this guy fits pretty easily on the top over here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to stick him down because uh, I want to do some detailing and some weathering. And at that stage, I do want to pull off these tracks. Yeah. Because I don't want to get any kind of paint on these. Mm -hmm. Now, Sid, you had a tip. I did have a tip. When you look at the little pegs that... These uh, guys over here? Yes. Yeah. Those ones. If you take a uh, side cutters... Like these guys here? Or like this guy here? This, this, the side cutter there, yeah. that thing. If you cut the top of that peg at a 45 degree angle, so you remove just a little fraction of an edge yep. of it, it will create less friction when you put that top okay. on and you will be able to remove it easier. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Because the manual even says, be very careful, especially with these, yeah. especially these little guys over here. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so I'm not going to stick him down. But okay. uh, yeah, you get the idea. Yeah. But when it's done, it'll pretty much look like that. I think it looks pretty sporty, this tank. Don't well, you, you know, it's a futuristic Gundam tank, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, yeah that's uh, all I've done up to now. Um, mm -hmm. Looking forward to getting uh, this uh, done by the next week and then start with the weathering and detailing. All right. So that's the tank, Sid. Okay. Okay, Ryan, what questions have we got? Oh, wait. Last episode, we talked about which director should be directing a Macross movie if it were to happen. And we had a lot of comments a on Facebook. A lot of comments. So if you haven't been to our Facebook page, please go there. And add your thoughts. Yeah, on who should direct. <laughs> I guess um, I've grabbed. <laughs> this isn't an official, by the way. We just brought up the idea of it happening. No, so, yeah. Uh, Someone did know. mention cracked.com. Yeah. Did do something similar, but I didn't okay. look into it. But anyway, I've taken a list of the directors people mention and said, and I will think about it. Sure. We will discuss them, not just think about it. Yeah, we watch, will discuss them watching right now for, it, for your pretty pleasure. Boring. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. um, so the first yeah. was Takeshi Miike. Oh, he did a Thirteen Assassins. He did a Thirteen Assassins, and, and uh, he was actually one of the one of the ones I suggested. But uh, Takeshi Miike, his action is really good, and yeah. his his shots are really set up well. But yeah. I find with his movies, mostly there's always one scene. It's just in there for gratuitous sake. Oh, okay. So if we can eliminate that kind of thing, then he would be a good decision. Yeah, I, I don't know. Small directors, sometimes they don't know how to handle Takeshi Miike is a small director, right? Eh, 13 Assassins is a very, you know, we need Ridley Scott. What about Itchy the Killer? Okay, anyway, yeah. Ridley Scott, he, no, is, he I, did some famous movies, I, I did think. recently do watch Prometheus, and yeah. even though it was a beautiful movie, yeah, there were some real plot holes, so yeah. I don't know. But I enjoyed Aliens, Blade Runner, um, mm -hmm. 
uh, what was the one set in the Middle East? Uh, Black Hawk Down. So he does action very well. Yeah, he does. Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson. Lord of the Rings. Uh, too much CG for me. But it's Maybe. a freaking CG robot movie, dude. I know, but when you watch King Kong, it's like, wow, cool, this is like Land of the Dinosaurs and stuff. And then you have like a two minute long brontosaurus stampede, which doesn't, no way oh, but come on the plot of the come movie. Come on, uh, Godzilla versus, or King Kong versus the dinosaurs. Yeah, scene. that was great. That was but awesome. then what about the scene where they're running down, like, trying to get away what from What about the slow-mo Hobbit scene at the end? <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, okay, okay. Next is J.J. Uh, Abrams. J.J. Abrams? He got a lot of love, and I'm like, I think yeah. he got all his love based on the Star Trek rendition. Yeah? Also good, uh, he good. He's stuff. done other stuff, I'm sure. Can you name? It? I cannot at this time. Quick IMDb. James it? Cameron. James Cameron. A lot of people chose yeah. Avatar. Look, I'm not a big Avatar fan. I just didn't get it. I don't. Um, I didn't. Well, James Cameron, he's okay. Oh, of course, he's okay. I actually liked Titanic. Avatar because I think that for such a movie that you know was it was what almost three hours long or whatever that even though you knew uh, basically it was pretty stereotypical it tied itself in it tied his itself well. best movie I think was Abyss he did Abyss yeah he did Abyss yeah, that, was that was for me yeah. his best yeah. some person <laughs> chose Peter Berg he did Battleship yeah, I, I still Battleship. haven't seen it but I've heard pretty <laughs> <laughs> a movie based on a board game okay. did you watch uh, uh, on YouTube there's this channel called how it should have ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was had it had the Optimus and Megatron playing battle. <laughs> that was a good one. Awesome. <laughs> um, M Night Shyamalan. Yeah. yeah. His guy's really faded, didn't he? Do that. Uh... He did the Sixth Sense, which everybody thought was great. But if you saw the the twist at the end coming halfway through the movie, like I did, it kind of lost its. I like. Memory. What was the one he called? Break. Shat something. Ah, uh, Unbreakable. Unbreakable. That was the, that was the idea. Right. Was a very. It yeah. was a smart idea, but. Meh. Yeah. Sam Raimi. I would like Sam Raimi if he does yeah. it as he does Army of Darkness. I think that would be good. Army Tony Darkness. Scott. Now, Tony Scott recently died, yeah, but everyone was saying he did the best dogfights in uh, Top Gun. Yeah. And they were saying, you know, Macross dogfights. Well, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Although I think that uh, in this day and age of CG, that dogfights are going to be fantastic regardless of who you put in charge of them, maybe. Storyboarding is probably more important than yeah. when it comes to that. Eh. <laughs> Shoji Kawamori. Kawamori. He, direct, he directed Macross Zero. Yeah, and a lot of people said, well, he has experience. Well, he knows the characters yeah. in the story, so that, that's definitely beneficial. Oh, uh, ignore that. Uh, <laughs> Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro. Have you seen Guillermo del Toro? I love his stuff. He yeah. did uh, Hellboy and yeah. some other stuff. So, yeah, I'd give this guy a thumbs up. Spielberg. No. He no. does all right. Come on. Fail. Come on, he Fail. does okay. He does okay. I, I like Spielberg. He was responsible for Indiana Jones 4. He was E.T. E yes, I mean, he's like Lucas. He's just... When he produces, he's like that. And he did that dinosaur TV he show. He did the uh, one Close Encounters of the Third Kind, didn't he? In the day, dude. In okay, the day. all right. Uh, Luke Besson. Luke Besson, I like Luke Besson. Yeah, director of Fifth Element. Yeah, and Taxi. 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 Yeah. Great director, beautiful yeah. stuff. Christopher Nolan. Only one person really mentioned him. That's probably just because he did, just did Batman. Yeah. Meh. That's mm. my reaction to. Sorry, Christopher Nolan. Whoever. Oh, I love what he does. Um, it's me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. One guy said J.J. Abrahams directing Joss Whedon's script and Steven Spielberg producing. I would say Joss Whedon should direct after he did Avatar. I mean, Avi. Uh, what's the latest one? Avengers. Avengers. Yeah. And he did Firefly, and I love that show. Firefly is great. Paul Greengrass. Never he did, heard of him. He did Born. The oh, Born the movies. Stuff? Uh, okay, okay. I'm like, yeah, but is eh, different. Yeah. Yasuhito uh, Kikuchi. Yep. Mm, they did their original they did Across. Not. Actually, that's pretty cool. That, uh, the viewers out there know that stuff. We mentioned a Cross movie, and they start telling us who did the originals. Like, yeah, well, the problem with a lot of Japanese like manga or anime or mm -hmm. whatever is they give it to people like remember Dragon Ball? So yeah, yeah. And they just get just gets butchered. They well, never give it to like good directors. Any, any Hollywood movie. Yeah, but they never give it to the guys who you know could I agree, but I think that's uh everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. 
I would say Joss Wheaton, like that's who I would choose because I think he does good stories. Hmm. I would probably go with Takeshi Miike. Okay. Because I watched his latest movie, the uh, what is it, Ichime? It's uh, which is what's the English title of that one? It's a remake of the 96s film Harakiri. Okay. It's fantastic. Okay. It's, it's amazing, and it doesn't have the gratuitous scene that he usually throws in there. So well, thumbs you, up for that movie. Okay, so there we have our choices. Do you agree or disagree? That's right. And of course you'll disagree with Ryan. That is wrong. <laughs> um, whatever happened to the Millennium Falcon? Um, well, we've mentioned a few times. The reason I haven't finished it is it's just summer. It's so I live in a small hot. apartment and I can't use any chemicals at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Okay, so by Odin's beer. Ryan and a beard. Okay, thanks. And Sid, drinking <laughs> while on the clock, like a gun blah boss. My question is for Ryan. How do you find the tank building so far? I have been thinking of getting one or two to add to my collection and I think it would be a good time passer. And what about the macros kit you showed last episode? Will you be doing a build for, up for that one? I would really love to see a work in progress for it by you. Brainstorm. Um, the tank is, is great. Um, it's actually um, out of stock on our site, but it, you can still order it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll just bring it in for you. Oh yeah, the, ta the tank is great. It's actually pretty straightforward. How do you think it compares for you, to the Millennium Falcon that you've done. Well, this is the Millennium Falcon was a huge job. This yeah. is seriously it could take you like three or four hours just to put the tank okay. together. But I want to spend more time, kind of weathering it up, mm -hmm. detailing it. And I think the great this kit is great for that because it has all this uh, space. Yeah. To go crazy. You can see you got a lot of a lot of flat surfaces. No, the Falcon was long here. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be good. Next. All right. I think I will be the director of the Macross reboot. Okay. This is from Cake and I will cast Ryan <laughs> as a legendary Captain Go if he can spare some of his tank building time to appear in the show. Yeah. Question to Ryan. <laughs> if you're Ichio in Macross, will you choose Lin Min Mei or Misa Hayase? Now, I had a huge crush on Misa Hayase <laughs> as a kid. Yeah. So I'd have to go with her. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Min Mei was cute. Yeah, I watched uh, Macross on television actually, they're re running the old, old Macross series and I flipped through last night, night before, and there was Macross. You know, Cheryl Noem with the K. I you think, think it holds up? Um, it's not bad, like, it's not it does alright. The animation was pretty good at the time, so, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it holds up. I'm always so scared of watching, like, old shows, because I have yeah. all the Robotech series. Yeah. But I'm like, I keep thinking of A Team, and like, you watch old shows like that, and you're like, Jesus, how why could I, I watch this? How could I like this? <laughs> I know. It's so corny. But no, I did watch a couple of the yeah. first episodes of, of Robotech, and it's yeah. a good show. Mm -hmm. Good story, actually. Yeah. And I think he ends it by, to be honest, I agree with the others that James Cameron will probably be the one for the director role. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine you put it in 3D? Oh, God. 3D. It'll be like Those dog fighting jets coming right at you. Yeah, but I want a story. Like I, I always think Macross, it was about a strong story and yeah, strong you can relationships. Have, you can have jets flying at your face with a strong story. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I'm not Unless a 3D you're person. Unless George Lucas, can have a strong story. Yeah, you'd have a 3D monkeys in my <laughs> spaceship, freaking oh. hamsters staring <laughs> at the jets as they fly past. But we're not there. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Great show, Sid and Ryan. Thanks for answering my question. To answer yeah. Ryan's question, I think Ridley Scott or J.J. Abraham's good choice mm -hmm. should do the Macross reboot movie. Or better yet, a Gundam live action movie. Anything to make me forget the G Savior crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know what to say. By the way, do you guys feel like being some sort of celebrities now? Have you ever encountered a situation that someone at random talks to you because they recognize you from Gunpla TV? That's from Jetfire11. So we're celebrities now? No, since a celebrity, was we have had an experience at the one Gundam show. Yeah, some we guy went to the Gunpla to Expo last November, mm -hmm. and somebody actually came up to us and said, Japanese guy, spoke English. He uh, had been living in America for a long time, and he came up to us and, I watch your show every week, it's great, I'm happy to meet you. And, but yeah, of course, I didn't have to sign anything for him. He didn't go that far. But. You should have said, you should have said, do you want me to sign something <laughs> Do you have a piece of paper? No. Uh, but you said someone might have recognized you at yeah, the latest Yeah, at, uh, at the one I was on Saturday, the car hobby. I was in line trying to get uh, the Gende stuff. Waste of an hour. And uh, some Japanese guy walks by. And at the time, I'm, I'm uh, reading my book, standing in line. But I have this Gundam shirt on. I, had a, I received a, a 
Gundam fan shirt, yeah, fan art in. shirt. Yeah. Uh, actually, I wore it on Saturday, and I'm a bachelor right now, so I only do laundry like once every five days, so I can bring it on the show today. But it, somebody sent me a t-shirt, and it had a hand-drawn Gundam on there. It was really, really good. So I'm standing in line, and uh, see, I don't know if it was because it was me or because of the t-shirt, but this Japanese guy he walks by, and he looks at me, and he smiles and waves, and then he nods, and then he walks away. He so must have recognized He must have recognized me, or he's not all there in the head. One of the two. I don't know. Now, there was a question. Someone said, oh, we should meet up for drinks. Um, how many people that watch us are actually physically present in Japan? That's a good question. I know we've, we've had questions from some people in Japan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, recommending places to go to get supplies and stuff. So, how many people are in Japan, relatively close to Tokyo, okay. and if possible, we could meet up yeah. in Akihabara, and just check out all the gun plus stop stores there. And Ryan's like, they just want to buy a mouse drink. or something. <laughs> and then we'll go and get drunk. No, we'll, go, we'll go for a drink. We'll go for a drink. So yeah, let us know. If there's enough people, yeah, you know, we'll be people, up for that. No sure. worries. Yeah. If anybody's visiting Japan and is going to be in the area. Let us know. Let us know. Yeah. Always game. Yeah. Akihabara. But someone used an abbreviation of Akihabara, just like Akihab. Akiba. Akiba. Yeah, that's yeah. what they call it. Akiba. Aki Akiba. That's what I call it. Akiba. That's for the people in the know. Well, Japan has this habit of like shortening things. To I haven't like, been here long enough to abbreviate. Yeah, so Akihabara, you take out a syllable or whatever, you have Akiba. And they have Mr. Donut. And it's actually Mr. Don't, Mr. Donut or whatever. But uh, they call it Mizdo. Let's go to Mizdo, they say. Kombi? Yeah, Kombi instead of Kombi. Yeah. So. Yeah. Ken Kentucky instead yeah. of like Kentucky Maku. Fried Chicken. Mac. Yeah, and fast kitchen, but I'm not going to say it because it all sounds like a swear word. <laughs> uh, well, um, yeah. that's all the questions. All right, so next week we're going to be back doing a little bit of a tutorial. We're going to yep. show masking because people have been asking. Yes, this tank will be masking done. Masking because they've been asking, and uh, I will set to myself to tasking. Okay. Look at that. Boom, right there. And uh, I've actually ordered the supplies I need, so it's all, it's all okay. should be ready to go next time. Next yeah, time. as I was saying, the tank will be done, but the weathering will stop. Yeah. So. Also, be sure to check out the uh, Hobby Link TV blog and our Facebook page because I have pictures from the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have a lot of time to take a lot of pictures because I was trying to get into that lineup. But uh, they're what I took of the new Gundams. We'll, we'll, show we'll you. be there. All right. Sweet. All right. See you next time. See ya.